Okay, so in this video, we are going to take the second part of friction and uh, the second part of the friction notes. And in the friction notes we took before, we learned about the different types of friction, as well as we learned basically kind of how friction works in general. Well, now we're going to take friction and we're going to see how we can actually use it mathematically with net force. So the first question we have to we have to remember is what is net force? Well, net force is the total amount of force. So all the forces acting on an object gives us our net force. So if we have a box being pushed in the right direction with a force of 200 newtons, and then we have another force going in the opposite direction of 10 newtons, we'll say that force is friction. What would be the net force on this whole system? Okay, well, net force is basically 190 newtons because you take 200 newtons minus 10 newtons. Now, it's not just 190 newtons, but it's 190 newtons to the right. Because remember, in this case, since we're adding up all the forces, you got to have a direction. So that's why we got to put this arrow here. Now, we can put it here, we can put it next to it or something, or just write the word out right. But we have to include what we're talking about here as far as direction and number. So let's take a look at this graphically and, and, and kind of see if we can identify this relationship between um, within friction. So now that we kind of reviewed net force a little bit. So here we have friction or a friction graph. And if we were to look at it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the weight or the normal force in newtons on the x-axis so you can see it down here and if you think to your experiment where we drag the blocks around you put weight on the block well what were you measuring you were measuring the actual force so you were measuring how how hard it was to pull something so what that means is that the force of the pull would be your dependent variable or what would go on your y-axis okay now if you look at this you'll notice that I put the normal force was actually your weight, okay? Because that's what you were actually changing. But in reality, what you were changing was your normal force, okay? In the case over here, you were measuring how hard it was to pull. But in reality, you were measuring how hard friction was pulling because according to Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite. So as hard as you were pulling to keep that block moving at the same speed, friction was pulling the opposite way. So if we were to actually look at the relationship and actually see how it would go, if we, as we went up in newtons, or excuse me, in, in normal force, as we went up in weight, what happened with how hard you had to pull? Well, if we were to actually look at it and we were to actually graph it, we would notice that the line would just increase and increase and increase. So the farther along we went in normal, or excuse me, yeah, in normal force, the friction would increase by the same amount. So the more normal force we had, the more friction we had. Did it matter our speed? It didn't. Speed had no effect on it. So if we go ahead and we take a look at an actual graph that we got, and in this case we're going to, the weight wouldn't be wouldn't be there, so you would actually go ahead and uh, ignore the weight here. Alright, so that, that's not there. We got a graph that looked like this. Okay? Well, when we have these graphs, what we have two areas in it. We have this peak up here at the top, and we have the valley down below. Now, this means that it was harder to pull as you started from zero. It was harder to pull, 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 and then it kind of slipped, and then it was easier to pull. Well, if you remember back to our first friction notes, there are two types of friction. You have static friction and kinetic friction, and they fit together like surfaces fit together like two cones. So in this case, you have to think about it, which would be more settled in and not willing to move? Something that's stationary or something that's already moving and kind of rolling over the surface. And that gives you what you need to know because at the peak, you've got static friction and down below you have kinetic. So you have to remember when we talk about these two frictions that static friction is always going to be greater than kinetic. So with what we've already talked about, we know that we have what net force is. We know the relationship between uh, friction, uh, between weight and normal force and 
friction. We also know the difference between static and kinetic friction. So now let's actually look at this mathematically. So when we looked at that relationship as friction went up, normal force went up, or to look at it another way, as, fr as normal force would go down, so would the force that r friction required. So the question we have to ask then is, what do we know about the surface? Because everything we've talked about so far is we've talked about the force of friction, the normal force. We haven't even mentioned the surface. So basically, if we think about it, the rougher the surface was, mean, it means the more force that was needed to move it. So if you think about it, if you have a really jagged surface or a really rough surface like a gravel road, it's a lot harder to drag something along a gravel road than it is, say, a block of ice. So how do we apply this in math? That's the big question. Well, there actually is a formula that connects all three of these things. We know that the formula has to relate friction and normal force. We also have to include the surface. So what that gives us is that gives us this formula here. The formula is the force of friction is equal to this letter here is called mu, M-E-W, okay? But it looks basically like a U with a little tail on the front end of it. But this word, this little thing right here stands for what's known as the coefficient of friction. Basically, that's a big old fancy word for how rough the surface is. But that's the actual term. It's the coefficient of friction. Okay? So, let's take a box. Got a box here on the screen. And let's say it's being pushed right with a force of 250 newtons. And let's say friction is resisting that push. Okay? So it's being pushed along the ground with a force of 250 newtons, but friction is pushing back with a force of 50 newtons. So the first question you need to ask yourself is you need to ask yourself, what's the net force? Well, that's pretty easy to solve. You just go through, you know you have 250 newtons, and you know you have 50 newtons, so then you're going to go ahead and you're going to subtract them. Now the question is, why do I subtract them? Why don't I add them? Well, because... The 50 newtons is taking away from the 250 newtons. They're not working with each other. They're working against each other. They're playing a game of tug of war. So they're, work, they're not working in the same direction. If they were working in the same direction, so if this one was pushing 250 this way, and this one over here was also pushing 50 this way, then you'd add them. But in this case, because they're going opposite directions, we subtract them. So you get that, very simple, 200 newtons. You've got to remember your unit. So 200 newtons is our, uh, is our net force. So we all know our equation, F equals MA. So the question that we have here now is what can we use this information for? Well, we have the force, we don't have the mass, and we don't have the acceleration. But if we actually take a look at this equation, we can actually identify that whenever we look at this equation, this F equals MA, we're not really talking about force, just any force. We're actually talking about net force, okay? Because is this box going as fast as it could if there was no friction? No. This friction is actually taking away from its motion. So box gets pushed this way. Friction slows it down a little bit. So it's not going to be speeding up nearly as much. It's not going to be accelerating nearly as much. So let's take this a little farther. We know that the, so as you can see, that the mass and acceleration will still be related. So let's take this a little farther. We know that the net force of that box was 200 newtons. Let's say that the mass of the box was 75 kilograms, okay? So what would the acceleration be? How fast would it be speeding up? Well, let's go to our equation, force of net. So net force, that's all that this little sub this little uh, net down below means net force, okay, is equal to mass times acceleration. So we know that the net force is 200 newtons. Let's replace the numbers. 
So what would we put here for mass? Well, that'd be 75 kilograms. Do we know the acceleration? We don't. So that means that one's going to be left unknown. So that means now I've got to take acceleration and I need to isolate it. I need to put it by itself. How do we do that? Well, we divide by 75 kilograms. But if I do it to this side of the equation, I have to do it to this side. So that means I divide the other side by 75 kilograms. These two 75 kilograms then cancel out, which means I have acceleration equals 200 newtons divided by 75 kilograms. And when you put that into the calculator, you get about 2.66. What's the unit for that? Meters per second squared. We're always dealing with acceleration in meters per second squared. So now we know our acceleration. Now the good thing about this, because we understand this formula, it works if you need any part. So that means what if I have the net force and the acceleration, can I figure out the mass? Yes. If I have the mass and the acceleration, can I figure out the net force? Yes. As long as I have two of the parts in here, I can figure out anything else. So how can we connect this to friction? Because all of this comes down to friction. So if you think, if you think back to our, our, our picture, okay, a couple of slides ago, let's jump back. We can see that our net, our friction force was uh, 50 newtons, okay? So jump forward a little bit, so, but that's okay. How can we connect the friction? So we know that the force of friction was 50 newtons. We also know from the first slide that our equation is the force of friction times mu, coefficient of friction, times normal force. So if I have these, I can figure this stuff out. Let's go ahead and let's say, oh, I'm sorry. We have to think back. What does this tell us again? This actually tells us the weight. What does this tell us again? This tells us how hard we're pulling. Okay. So this actually tells us we can figure out the weight of something if we know the normal force because normal force is preventing something to, from pushing through the surface. If I'm standing on the floor, normal force prevents me from falling through it. If I'm leaning against a wall, normal force prevents me from falling through it. But in this case, if an object's sitting on it, sitting on something, you've got normal force there. So let's say that mu, or the coefficient of friction, or how rough the surface is, is 0.43, okay? This is one of the few times there is no unit. Coefficient of friction does not have a unit. Very important, put that in your notes. So the question is, how much do the, does the box weigh now? So what are we figuring out? We're figuring out normal force. I have two of these things in this equation. It's really easy. It's the same exact thing as we just did for F equals MA. So the force of friction is equal to mu times N, or normal force. Let's replace the force of friction with the, uh, the numbers that we have up here. Let's replace mu, or the coefficient of friction, with the numbers that we have right there. So 50 newtons is equal to 0.43 times normal force. Remember, no unit. So rearranging that, to get rid of it over here, I divide by 0.43, got to do it to the other side too, 0.43, those cancel out, so I end up with point, oh, 50 newtons divided by 0.43, which equals 116.28 newtons, I still have a unit. So I now know the box weighs 116.28 newtons. But see, the, the interesting thing about this is that we can even connect it back into our F equals MA formula. I now know my weight. What's its mass then? Can I use that to figure out its mass? Well, we got to remember, weight is a what? It's a force. So because weight's a force, we can use the force equals MA equation. Here's your force. Here's your mass. Here's your acceleration. But wait a minute. Where did I get this number from? Well, if you remember, 10 meters per second squared is nothing more than gravity rounded. So that, that's the acceleration of gravity. So I do my math. I divide by 10. I divide by 10. 
and I end up with 11.6 kilograms. So as you can see, looking at all of these, all of these things, that everything here is interconnected. So no matter what happens, if I have force with friction, if I've got net force, I can figure out a lot of things by putting these equations together. But ultimately, it comes down to two equations. It comes down to F equals MA and the friction formula right here. Friction, the force of friction, is equal to mu times newtons, or excuse me, um, normal force. Okay? So make sure in your notes you have this written down. And hopefully it will help you solve some of the problems that come with friction and coefficient of friction and all that. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for your time.